Okay, so now we're going to look at rational functions in a little more detail here. Just like we looked at polynomial functions in a little more detail. Okay, so by definition, you already know what a rational function is. A rational function is a function that takes this form where you have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So p of x and q of x are polynomial functions. So a rational function is nothing more than a polynomial function divided by a polynomial function. That's all a rational function is. And you know, that concept should be pretty familiar to you, as should this. The domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers except where the denominator equals zero because that leads to division by zero which obviously can't be done. So when you're finding the domain of a rational function which we kind of looked at already in a way, finding the domain of a rational function is just finding out you know the bad points right It's just where the denominator, which is denoted as q of x, equals 0. So once you find the values where the denominator equals 0, you just omit them from the set of all real numbers, and what lets, what's left over is the domain. we kind of done this already when we looked at properties of functions. All right, so if I look at this function, this rational function, I have 3x squared minus 5 over x plus 2. Well... This is undefined when the denominator equals 0, which is x plus 2. Solving that equation is very easy. Subtract 2 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 2. So that means x equals negative 2 is a bad point. That's a bad point. And that's the only bad point we have. So the domain is everything except negative 2. All real numbers except x equals negative 2. That's the domain of R of x in words. All real numbers except x equals negative 2. I could be anything else except negative 2. And I'll give you division by 0. If you want to use interval notation for the domain, well you know that already. Everything except negative 2 would just be negative infinity up to negative 2 and that would be open because I'm not including it in my domain or from negative 2 to positive infinity. That's an interval notation. Alright, now let's look at number 2. So this is going to be undefined when the denominator, which is x squared plus 4, equals 0. Well, if I solve that equation, now x squared plus 4 does not factor. But if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get x squared equals negative 4. Now if I take the square root, I'm going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Uh-oh. What is that? I can't take the square root of negative 4. But, well, what I do here is I end up getting imaginary numbers, don't I? I end up getting plus or minus i times the square root of 4, which ends up being plus or minus 2i. Right? Those are imaginary numbers.
So what's my domain then? Well, remember, the domain of my rational function is the set of all real numbers except where my function equals 0. Well, or, or my domain equals 0, I mean. Well, my domain, you know, my denominator equals 0. When it equals 0, I get imaginary numbers. So if I take imaginary numbers away from real numbers, what am I left over with? I'm just left over with real numbers. There's no difference. Right? If I take away imaginary from real, what I'm going to have left is real. In other words, nothing's being removed from it because imaginary numbers are not real numbers. They're different kinds of numbers. So my domain here, so what this means is there are no real numbers that give me division by zero. No real numbers give division by zero. So that means x could be anything. X can be any real number. So my domain of R of X is all real numbers. This R of X. And an interval notation, that's easy. How do you denote all real numbers with interval notation? Just go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, you know, just be aware that, you know, sometimes you're, you know, when you divide by a polynomial, sometimes this polynomial may not give real solutions. It might give imaginary solutions. And in that case, the domain here could be all real numbers. Okay, well, that was kind of familiar to you because we kind of did this already. It was even some problems on the review sheet for exam two. So... What we're going to do now is we're going to go on to something that, you know, another property of a rational function that is important because it allows us to graph or give us the properties of the graph of a, ra of a, of a um, rational function. And these are called asymptotes. And these are, you know, you know, asymptotes are values that dictate the behavior of a rational function. All right. Now there's two kinds of asymptotes. There's two kinds. There's vertical asymptotes. And there's horizontal asymptotes. Now sometimes a horizontal asymptote, sometimes it could become what we call an oblique asymptote. So technically you have two things. We have a vertical asymptote and a horizontal or an oblique asymptote. And which one we get, you know, we'll look at that when we get to it. But these are the type of, of asymptotes you can have with a rational function. And asymptotes show up in rational functions. They show up in other kinds of functions too, but we'll get to that. All right. So the first kind we're going to look at is vertical asymptotes. And vertical asymptotes are actually just, they're vertical lines. Determined by x. A vertical line determined by x. A rational function so if we're given a rational function, and 
where the rational function is written in lowest terms, which means the polynomials are factored. They're factored. It has a vertical asymptote when the denominator equals zero. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? Because we already did that right here. If I refer to you to the previous page, right, we found where the denominator was equal to zero. So in this particular rational function, x equals negative two is a bad point. Well, we can refer to it as a vertical asymptote. Now we could call negative two a vertical asymptote because this is where the denominator q of x would equal zero. So basically, what I could say now is a bad point could be called a vertical asymptote of a rational function. It's important to note that the graph of a rational function will never cross a vertical asymptote. Why is that? Well, think about it. This is where the function is, could potentially be divided by zero. So, you know, since that's not possible, the graph is never going to cross the value where it gives zero in the denominator because you can't divide by zero. Because you can't divide by zero. So finding vertical asymptotes is the same thing. It's almost it's almost like finding the domain of a rational function. The bad points are basically vertical asymptotes. Nope. Bad points of a rational function are also considered vertical asymptotes. So find the vertical asymptote, and you know there could be more than one, if any, of the following rational functions. All right, so the vertical asymptote occurs where the denominator equals zero. It occurs at x squared minus 49 equals zero. So solve that equation and you'll get the bad points, which is the vertical asymptotes. So, you know, that's a difference of two squares, so that factors to be x plus seven times x minus seven equals zero, which means x plus seven equals zero, or x minus seven equals zero, which means x equals negative seven, or x equals positive seven. So these values right here are my vertical asymptotes. And in the next section, we're going to look at how they play a role in graphing a rational function. Basically, without getting ahead, because in the next section, we're going to look at how to graph a rational function by hand. These values, negative 7 and, posit and positive 7, they're vertical asymptotes, which means that This vertical line, which is x equals negative 7, and x equals 7, those are vertical asymptotes on this coordinate system. So my graph will never cross these vertical lines. I said that right here. The graph will never cross a vertical asymptote. And we'll get into that when we look at them. Now, that's how they play a role in graphing a rational function. Okay. Let's look at number two. So again the vertical asymptotes notice how the numerator doesn't play a role in it. The numerator does not play a role in finding a vertical asymptote. It occurs at the denominator which is when x squared 
plus 4x minus 21 equals 0. And the denominator equals 0. So solve this equation. Okay. Well, this is a quadratic, so it factors. Hopefully it factors. So which factors of 21 give me 4? Well, that's going to be, what, 7 and 3? So x and x, 4 and 3. Um, oh, wait, not, not 4 and 3. I'm sorry, 7 and 3. What am I doing? I'm sorry. I'm being an idiot. So 7 times 3 is 21, and they combine to be 4, right? So... Since I have positive 4x, that means 7 should be positive, and 3 should be negative because I have negative 21, right? Negative 3x plus 7x gives me plus 4x. Plus 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. So those are the factors of that quadratic, which means x plus 7 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals negative 7, or x equals 3. So these values are my vertical asymptotes. That's it. That's how you find vertical asymptotes. Um, you know, if I refer back to chat, uh, page one, you know, what would the vertical asymptotes of this function be? Well, the denominator gave me two imaginary numbers. And since I don't graph with imaginary numbers, this rational function would have no vertical asymptotes. It's just worth noting that. So, you know, finding vertical asymptotes is straightforward enough. Just look where the denominator equals zero. Okay. Well, well now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the other kind of asymptotes, which are horizontal or oblique asymptotes. It's either going to be horizontal or oblique. Now, this seems like a lot of information, but it really isn't. It's really not that bad. It just looks intimidating, but it really isn't. So, basically, finding a horizontal or oblique asymptote, asymptote boils, down to, it boils down to one of four cases. All right? So, if I'm given a rational function, this is just listing it out term by term, right? This is term by term of the numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. All right. So this is the leading term of the numerator. That's the leading term there of p of x. This right here is the leading term of q of x. OK? And remember, when we were looking at degree, the degree of the top polynomial is n, right? That's the power of the leading term of the top polynomial. And the degree of the leading term of the bottom polynomial is m. So when we're finding vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontal or oblique asymptotes, we're actually, look, we're actually comparing the degree of the top to the degree of the bottom of the polynomials. So let me make a note of that. Note. When determining the horizontal or oblique asymptote, we compare the top degree to the bottom degree. That's what we do. So we have one of four cases. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, then the horizontal asymptote is nothing more than y equals zero. That's, that's the first case. So for example, if I have the rational function x cubed over, or I'm sorry, x squared over x cubed, right? 
that's my rational function, what's the horizontal asymptote? Zero. Y equals zero. Because two is less than three. The degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. That's easy. That's an example of case one. If the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is the line of their coefficients, the ratio of their coefficients. So the leading term, right, of p of x, the leading coefficient there is a of n. The leading coefficient of the denominator's greatest term is b of m. So in the case where their degrees are equal, their horizontal asymptote is just the ratio of their coefficients, a of n over b of m, which I wrote right here. So an example of that is if I had 3x to the third divided by 4x to the third. What's the horizontal asymptote there? The horizontal asymptote here would be y equals 0. What's the horizontal asymptote here? Well, x to the third over x to the third, their, their degrees are the same. So the horizontal asymptote would be the ratio of the leading coefficient 3 over the leading coefficient 4. So the leading so the line y equals 3 fourths would be the horizontal asymptote in that case. Now in case 3, if, if the degree of the top is one more than the degree of the bottom, so for example, in case 3, if my function, my rational function is 5x to the fourth over, I don't know, 4x to the third, the degree of the top is one more than the degree of the bottom. 4 is greater than 3 by a unit of 1, right? So in that case, the horizontal asymptote will become an oblique asymptote. And it's found by doing long division of polynomials. That is why we had to review long division of polynomials, because you could see how it shows up. And in the fourth case, so in that case, the horizontal asymptote would actually become an oblique asymptote. And we found it by doing long division of polynomials. Okay? This seems like a lot of information, but Generally, finding a horizontal asymptote boils down to one of three cases. Now, the fourth case does happen sometimes, but it's kind of rare. So if the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom by more than two, so it could be two units, three units, whatever, then it just follows the end behavior of the function. And we already know what end behavior is. It's just the end behavior of the lowest, or the leading terms in the top and bottom. So. For example, let's say my rational function looked like 6x to the fifth power over 2x squared. So 5 is greater than 2 by 3 units. It's, it's more than 2. That's all I need to know. It's more than 2, right? It's The difference between the degrees is not 1. It's Technically, it's 3. So the horizontal asymptote here, where all at r of x just follows the end behavior of... 6 over 2, which is 3, x to the well, x to the fifth over x squared is x to the third. It follows that in behavior. So, you know, this seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot, but when you practice it, you know, the concepts start to you know, they start to make sense a little bit. Okay, so a few example time, examples time. So find the horizontal asymptote, if any, of this function. I'm not asking you to find the vertical asymptote because you couldn't factor that. The only way you could solve for that is by using your calculator. You couldn't do that by hand, but you could do it with your calculator. I'm just asking to find the horizontal asymptote. Now, this could be either very easy 
or if you're doing long division it could be a little tricky. Okay, um, so how do we do this? Well, let's look at the degree of we're comparing the degrees of the top polynomial to the degree of the bottom polynomial. Horizontal asymptote. So what's the degree of the top? The degree of the top is, well, it's 4. What's the degree of the bottom? The degree of the bottom is 6. So which one of the three cases, well, technically four cases, are we referring to? It's case 1. The degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. The degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. That's what case 1 says. So since 4 is less than 6, the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, my horizontal asymptote, H A, is the line Y equals what? 0. That's it. That's it. Since the degree at the top is 4 and the degree at the bottom is 6, the degree of this, the top polynomial is 4, the degree of the bottom polynomial is 6, and since 4 is less than 6, my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. That's it. That is it. Now, I'm going to make a note here, and we're going to see this in the next section in 5.5, but um, I mentioned at the beginning of these notes let me go back to vertical asymptotes for a second. I mentioned that a graph of a rational function can never cross a vertical asymptote. However, and we're going to look at this in the next section, the graph of R of X, a rational function, may or may not cross a horizontal or oblique asymptote. And we'll see how or how it doesn't in the next section. So it'll never cross a vertical asymptote, but it could or could not cross a horizontal or oblique asymptote. It just depends. And we'll see how to do that in 5.5. But it's worth noting that. Okay. A few more examples. Find the horizontal asymptote of this function. Okay. Well, what's the degree of the top? The degree of the top is 3. What's the degree of the bottom? It's 2. All right, so which one of these three cases does it come to? Look in your notes. Well, it's case three. The top is greater than the bottom degree by a unit of one, right? The top is greater than two by one unit, right? So it's case three. So what does that mean about the horizontal asymptote? If the top is greater, if the top degree is greater than the bottom degree by one unit, just by one, that's what the plus one here means, then the horizontal asymptote becomes an oblique asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is actually an oblique asymptote. And it's found by long division. It is found by long division of polynomials. So in this case, it's a little bit longer. So the oblique asymptote is found by doing long division. 
of my rational function, which is above. So I got to do long division on this to find my oblique asymptote. So let's do that. So I have x squared plus x plus 1, right, goes into 2x cubed. So now, remember, when you do long division, you have to account for all the powers of x, right? 2x cubed plus 3x squared. Now, there's no x term here. I go from, I skip the x term, so I'm going to write a placeholder. 0x plus 2. Right. Okay. So now let's do the long division. So how many times does x squared go into two x cubed? Well that's gonna be two x, right? Two x times x squared is two x cubed. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Subtract the whole thing. Notice how I kept my powers aligned. x cubes, x squareds, x's. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared. 0x minus 2x is negative 2x. Bring down to 2. Okay. Repeat the process again. How many times does x squared go into x squared? That's easy. One time. So 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. Subtract the whole thing. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 2x minus positive x. Well, that's going to be negative x, right? You distribute the negative. So negative 2x minus x is negative 3x. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so I have nothing left to bring down. So this right here is my remainder. So that goes into my quotient, right? So my quotient is 2x plus 1 plus negative 3x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. All right, so I did the long division. Now the only question here is, what is my oblique asymptote? Well, an oblique asymptote ends up becoming a line, right? An oblique asymptote is basically a line. It's just an, an equation of a line. And the only part of the quotient that is oblique is the part that divides evenly. So the oblique asymptote is the line y equals, it's just a line. You know, a linear equation takes the form mx plus b. You know that. So what part of the quotient is that? It's right here, 2x plus 1. I don't care about the remainder part. I really don't. So the oblique asymptote is the line 2x plus 1. That's it. That's it. So, you know, in the case where the degree of the top is greater than, an, than the bottom degree by one unit, you know, finding the horizontal asymptote there could be a little lengthy because you've got to do long division. You've got to do this divided by, you've got to do the top divided by the bottom once you do long division, right? <clears throat> so, you know, that could get a little, that could get a little lengthy, but just, you know, just take it one step at a time. The oblique asymptote is the part that divides evenly. To the line 2x plus 1. It's just going to be a line. You can see that in your notes. right? 
the oblique asymptote takes this form, y equals mx plus b, which is right there. All right. This example, find the horizontal asymptote, if any, of the function 9x squared minus x plus 1 over 3x squared minus 2. All right, well, what's the degree of the top? The degree of the top is 2. What's the degree of the bottom? 2. So we have the case where the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. So which case is that? That is, in your notes, that is case number 2. The degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. So that means my horizontal asymptote What does that mean? It means my horizontal asymptote is the line y equals. It's going to be the ratio of their leading coefficients. It's going to be the ratio of their leading coefficients. So this is the leading term, right? That's the term with the degree of 2. That's the leading term in the bottom, right? So what's the leading coefficient? of the top term. It's 9. The, what's the leading coefficient of the bottom term? 3. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of 9 over 3, which ends up being 3. So basically the horizontal asymptote here is y equals 3. That's it. That is it. So, you know, it could be really easy, you know, finding a horizontal asymptote could be very easy. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And if they're the same, it's the ratio of their leading coefficients, 9 over 3, or whatever they are. And if it's, if the top is greater than the bottom by 1, then you have to do long division. In that case, it could get a little lengthy. But, um, yeah, so those are the only real cases that you know, you could get a horizontal asymptote, really. I know the fourth case, I don't really... The you know, fourth case really doesn't generate a horizontal asymptote. It just means it follows the end behavior of the leading term over the leading term. If, it's the, if the difference between their degrees is more than two, just look at the leading terms, and that's what they... Uh, it, there is no horizontal asymptote, really. It's just end behavior. Um, but... Yeah, so you have three cases, really. Case one, your horizontal asymptote is zero. Case two, your horizontal asymptote is um, the ratio of their leading terms coefficients. Case three, long division, it becomes an oblique asymptote, which is the line of the part that divides evenly of the polynomials. Seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It's not as bad as it seems. So, you know, those are some properties of rational functions that we should be aware of. Asymptotes, you know, domain of it, it's pretty easy. But finding vertical and horizontal asymptotes, you know, finding that is, finding that is useful. All right, so what we're going to do in the next section is we're going to look at how to graph rational functions by hand by looking at you know the properties of this rational you know finding you know by picking apart a rational function and graphing it by hand so that's the end of this video